Hello, welcome back to HCC TV Student Lounge. This is a show done by HCC students for HCC students to give our opinions, news, entertainment, and what's going on our, on our school. My name is Kyle Daragon. How are you, Carolina? I'm good, Kyle. We're also joined today by Benjamin, Andres, Josh, Eric, and Kinnard. We will also be joined by our guest, Dr. Idra Pelaez, who is here to talk about students returning to the fall semester at HCC. But first, let's move on to our top three news of the week. Houston Independent School District is looking for college students mentors to help teachers with online education. How important is to help teachers, right, Kyle? Yeah, I agree. I don't know if it would be too much of a help, you know, especially with kids, but maybe for college. Oh, I agree. This year, the mentoring will be happening virtually due to COVID-19. Mentors who qualify will be hired for a part-time position that will pay $12, $12 per hour and will include tasks such as assisting teachers in virtual classrooms, assisting students, and contracting parents for the additional school support. So, like, that's going to be very, very uh, helpful for teachers. I think during this time, it's perfect because a lot of people don't have a job. So, it's maybe a good opportunity for you. You know, you can work from home. So, if you don't have a job, you should consider applying. Yes, it's more cash. <laughs> now, U.S. officials took over Chinese consulate in Houston on Friday afternoon, less than an hour after the eviction deadline ordered by the Trump administration earlier this week amid accusations for it of espionage activity. Did you hear that that happened here in Houston, Kyle? Yeah, I did hear and I'm a little worried about that. I don't think we should discuss too much, but things are getting pretty tight, you know, and it's kind of, you know, but let's move on to the next topic. <laughs> now, the U.S. consulate in China officially shot in retaliation for Houston closure. So the Chinese government gave the Americans the same 72-hour time frame to close their Chengdu mission as Beijing had been given in Houston last week. Well, let's move on into our debate of today. Online versus homeschool versus any other type of uh, schooling. Now, uh, what do you think about this, Kyle? Should we keep this online? How are parents and teachers dealing with it? So I think for their own safety of, you know, the professors and the students, I do think that online would be the best choice. And during the, everything, especially in Texas, you've seen the, name, the, the number of cases just rising crazy. I don't think it's time to go back in person. It's going to be really complicated and I think it's going to bring a lot of bad consequences. In this note though, I know that homeschooling or online class sometimes can be tough. You know, at least from last semester, I know that, you know, my, my girlfriend has a little brother and, you know, he came here so she could teach him. And I noticed that the professor were not giving online class. They were just giving online assi assignments. So that means that the parents knew to free, uh, figure out like how they could do the assignments and help the kids to actually do the homework. So I think this is a little bit wrong, you know, and ATC was a little bit different. My experience with online class was actually the professors coming into a, a, you know, a scheduled time, teaching us what we need to learn. And based on that, we did the quizzes and homework. So I think that's the right way to do online classes when you're actually teaching the students and therefore giving assignments so you can follow up. But the other issue, it's technology. You know, not everybody has a good internet. Not everybody has computer. You know, in some cases you have multiple people in the same house. How are you going to share? How are they going to have class at the same time? So there's a lot of issues going on and we got to really think about how, what would be the best solution. But again, for the safety of people, you know, it's staying home. I think that should be the, the, the main thing that should be done at this point. Yeah, I totally agree with you, Kyle. I know how difficult it is for parents as it is for teachers. I have a very close friend. She is a high school teacher and she has told me how difficult it is for them to get in touch with the students. So uh, sometimes they don't have the updated information of the parents and uh, they cannot contact them over the phone. And also they don't know if the students have access to internet. So how difficult it is if they, they keep up with the assignments, they post their uh, virtual classes, everything online, but the students don't have access to internet. But, uh, well, Benjamin, what do you think about uh, parents? Do you know any parents who's dealing with this kind of situation? I mean, I knew a few uh, 
people who were going to school when I was when we were at HCC um, that, that had kids. And I was just thinking about it, like, what if they are in class um, classes or in person class, sorry. Um, and maybe the concern that they have of like going to school, being around people and then going back home to their kids. So I feel like that's something that, that they probably could be concerned about not going back to uh, in-person classes, especially knowing that um, like, cause I'm a filmmaking major and some of those classes are really like hands on and you have to be there. Cause they're not gonna send like 30 cameras to 30 kids and they don't know what they're gonna do with those cameras, especially how expensive the equipment is that, that HTC provides for us. So, I mean, in that sense, I mean, some parents, it's something that they're really gonna have to think about, you know, and the safety of their family and the priorities that they have. So, you know, that, that's my sense. I mean, I, I'm considering online classes, but, you know, I don't have, I just have me to concern about, so. <laughs> so I just have me to look out for, so we'll see how it goes. I think uh, this is a very controversial topic for these days. So take classes at, at home, well, go to the school, of course, I, I prefer go to the school to take classes there face to face. Of course, it's better. <clears throat> but I think the, the online classes is a challenge for each student. It's a challenge. But in the same in the same way, it's good for the student because they have to learn how to manage the time. Because in the future, you have to do that when you have your family, when you have your children, you have to learn how to manage your time. So I know uh, there are different difficulties. Uh, some students, they don't have the computers, they don't have the technology to take the online classes. But I, I think, okay, I think um, with the school, you can manage that problem. Maybe you can, uh, you, can, uh, you can call somebody to have that equipment in your home. And the important here is that you have learned how to take classes online or in the same way to take classes face to face is the pain of each student. So I think it's a big challenge. Oh, I totally agree with you, Andres. For example, uh, in HCC, they provided uh, laptops to students who didn't have computer at home. And they also opened a truck with Wi-Fi. I never got to go there because I'm so scared of getting to going outside right now. But I know they provided so many resources. Um, we wish that all the institutions had that possibility that they could provide all of this equipment to students and especially little kids, right? But well, before we move on to our guest, we will play the video that our department, including Kaio, created about the safe measures for the fall semester at HCC. Classes are on at HCC in the fall, and we couldn't be happier. We're doing everything we can to keep all of our students, staff, and faculty healthy. We're cleaning surfaces, rearranging classrooms and gathering areas to allow for social distancing, adding extra classes to give students plenty of room, wearing masks, and encouraging good hygiene. At HCC, we're doing our part to keep our community safe. And we're asking you to do your part too. When you come to campus, please wear a mask. Stay at least six feet from your classmates and anyone else you encounter. Wash your hands often. And most important, if you don't feel well or you think you've been exposed to the virus, please stay home. It's up to each of us to protect one another. So we must all do our part, both at HCC and when we're away from campus. Everyone has a responsibility to stay safe. This way, when we do come together, we can focus on education and feel confident that each of us is doing our part to stop the spread. That's what it means to be part of a community. That's what it means to be HCC. So what do you think about the video, guys? I made it, that's why it's so good. But for real, like when I shot this, I was really excited to see that HCC is actually doing things, you know, to help us students and, you know, keeping everything clean and come up with social distancing measures. So I'm really excited for the fall semester. And to talk about that today, we have uh, Ingrid Pillai. So how are you today? I'm doing well. Thank you for inviting me today and I'm excited to be here and, and work you know, with you and learn from you and the questions that our students have. 
Perfect. We have a lot of questions and I think, you know, the students are going to be really thankful because they've been trying to search, try to find out how they can find solution and we are here to help them. So let's start with the first questions. When are the in-person classes going to start at ATC? Yes, the in-person classes will start on September 28th and those will be the Flex Campus and Flex um, and Lab-based modalities. So those are the ones that are starting September 28th. If you have an online on a schedule or an online class, you will start on August the 24th. So make sure you attend class if you're doing an online class, you know. So so the in, I thought the in-person class you're actually going to start first online and then you're only going to go to campus on September. Yes, so the, the classes start August 24th, and I apologize if I'm confusing you all, but classes will start August 24th online, and the two modalities that are in person will begin on, this, on September 28th. Okay, perfect. I think that makes more clear. So all classes start, the difference is in person, you're only gonna be allowed to go in campus in September, okay. That yes. So with in-person class, the chance of someone, you know, getting COVID-19 is way higher and the risks are high too. So I would like to know what are the procedures in case, you know, a student is infected. Is he going to be in quarantine? Is the whole class going to be in quarantine? What's going to be the things that ATC is going to do to help, you know, avoid spread the, the, the virus? Absolutely. So before students can return to campus, they have to complete a COVID-19 checklist item in their student center. And that gives students an opportunity to learn best practices, wash your hands, stay home, uh, practice social distance, wear your mask. And, you know, if you're not feeling well, you know, please stay home. So that's one, one of the prerequisites. Once you come in on campus, you know, we're going to do the, the measurement of your temperature and putting different uh things in place for for the safety of our students but if we do find that there's a student that's sick in the classroom that student will you know will be reported uh, through the Dean of Student Services office and you know in order to return the, the student will need to provide a doctor's note indicating you know whether that person is COVID-19 positive or it was a false alarm and you know it's important that we treat every student with respect and dignity because just because you're coughing or you having symptoms doesn't mean that you are COVID-19 positive and of course if there is a positive case we will have to quarantine the class for the 14-day period perfect yeah that makes a lot of sense so and when it comes to international students what are the most update regulations for them are we allowed to take online classes only and, and what's the so far you know because i know it's been constantly changing so at this point now what are the regulations yeah as of yesterday if an international student was enrolled in online classes at as of this of March 13th, you can continue taking online classes for the fall semester. So that's as of yesterday, but be flexible in case things change. Okay, perfect. And um, so a lot of students are having trouble getting contact with non administrations. So what are the things that they can do in order to, you know, contact the right people and get information they need, you know, even in order to register for classes? Yes, and I'm sorry to hear that. We are, you know, eager to support our students. One of the new measurements that we put in place is uh, the Zoom lobby for advising and Zoom lobby for student services. And the one that has student services has enrollment, admissions, counseling, um, career services, veterans, international students eager to help you. We also have our call center um, that students can contact if they, you know, have a simple question. They can also contact me. I'm a very uh, student driven person and and my, my direct line is 713-718-7497. And if I don't have the answer, I'll research it. You know, we'll make appointments so that I can assist you personally or get you to the right person. Perfect. And just so you know, guys, we're gonna leave the link below in the description with the Zoom link that you can access. We also gonna put the hours that they are available in there. So make sure yes. you go there, check it out. And you know, and if you're having trouble, we have the solution for you now. So take advantage of that. And when it comes to the bookstore, is it going to be open for the fall semester? You know, I'm still waiting to hear back from the bookstore. I know students are able to search for the classes online and see what book is uh, required for their class. So 
students can purchase their books online. And as soon as we have an update, I'll share it back so that we can, you know, post it with our, you know, social media channels. Also, Adra, another question that we have is if a student does not have a computer or access to internet, will HTC still provide those for them? So we have uh, several opportunities for students to be equipped with the right tools. One um, will be, I would encourage students to apply for CARES funding through financial aid office. And if they're not eligible or the funds you know, are limited, we also have a foundation office that can provide support for students. Um, we also have put together through the help of our uh, IT department, a list of resources that are available for students at a discounted uh, price uh, through Comcast, AT&T, and I'll share the document for you uh, for you to post on, on social media so the students can see the possible uh, solutions that they can have. Yes, uh, please remember that we, we are going to have all of this information in the description of this video, and if you have any questions or comments, you can put them over here and we will address them as fast as we can and we will keep you updated as soon as we have an answer for that. Now, another question that we have from our students is uh, about the six drop rule. Will, the, will that be suspended over the fall semester? So the six drop rule is the state regulation, so it's not suspended, but if you select a, a, a reason for dropping your classes as COVID-19, it does not count against your six drop rule. If you drop for other reasons, that will count against your six drop rule. But if it's related to COVID-19, you should not worry about that. Oh, thank you. And that leads me to the question about the attendance policy. So some classes have the attendance policy and if a student gets sick, how is that going to be managed? Absolutely. So faculty and it's, it's going to be very flexible with the attendance of our students. If the student is not feeling well or is sick, the student can see the, the lecture from home. The lectures are going to be videotaped so that you can have that accessible and, you know, just communicate with your professor. That's what I tell my students. Always share with your professor what's happening in your life so that they're flexible with you and provide the proper accommodation so that you can finish the class successful. Thank you so much, Indra. Uh, this was very helpful. And as I try to say in every, in every episode, please try to keep, up, uh, keep going to the website, the HTC website, since this can change daily. So if not, refer to the, uh, our up to the minute show from HTC TV, and we will be have, we'll have this show running for you to get more information and the links below will be very helpful as well. Thank you for having me. Now we will move on into our last section, entertainment. We have the favorite movies or shows of all times. What's out, Kaya, that you want to tell us about? Hey, Carolina. So uh, today we each one pick a different category to talk about of a favorite shows or movie. So mine is comedy and my favorite show so far. And this, I've seen so many different shows and I still think my favorite comedy show is Friends because even though it's a really old, uh, show it still makes me laugh every time I watch. I rewatch already like three times, you know. And even though it's old, you know, it's still an old show because you know it was like I think like 15 years or even more. And it's still funny, and that's what makes it even better because usually when you have that like out to date show, like you cannot think it's funny or it's not you know important at the time anymore because it's been so long since they recorded. But it's still funny, and that's why I give my favorite show, comedy show, goes to. Friend. Well, Kyle, um, as an aspiring filmmaker, my favorite movie, uh, Constantine, it came out in 2005. It is a supernatural thriller slash action movie. It was uh, directed by Francis Lawrence, who did uh, I Am Legend. And uh, it stars Ke Keanu Reeves as a uh, supernatural demon hunter who works with angels to take down demons that are coming out of hell on Earth. And it has a pretty good story along with it, uh, him, with him having cancer and everything, and making a deal with both the angels and demons. It's about two hours. It's by Warner Brothers. I think it's a really good movie for people who are into uh, sci-fi or science fiction to get into. Thank you. Well, uh, Eric, my favorite movie is Love and Basketball. It's uh, sports related and kind of it's a rom romantic relationship that goes along with it. It gives you an inside scoop of 
really the male and the women perspective of two uh, friends that grows up to come become professional basketball players. It shows you the day in the life of from high school to college, and as a, those two characters is playing each other or in a relationship together. And after college, it shows you the, their life after the college into the NBA and the WNBA, and how all the how everything changes in life after basketball. So if you had to pick, that's my favorite movie because I play basketball. So I would suggest that you watch it. You might love it. My favorite movie is Fight Club, a 1999 film by David Fincher, starring Brad Pitt, Edward Norton, and Helena Bonham Carter. I tell you a bit more about the movie, but according to the rules, I am not allowed to do so. What I probably just said makes no sense to some of you, but if you watch the movie, you'll find out exactly what I mean. And then when you're watching it, you'll understand. Perfect, Josh. Thanks so much. Now I'm curious. I'm definitely going to watch the movie. So now is the time of the day, guys. We need to say goodbye, but again, stick to them because we have the funny video of the week or the meme and i would like to thank you for watching it means a lot and again we need your support to keep growing your audience okay so thank you so much and i see you next time thank you kyle for being here too uh we want to grow our audience so please share this video with your family and friends we'll see you on the next time on the student lounge <laughs>